Hello and welcome to News Click. Today, we are going to discuss the developments in the aftermath of attacks on two Aramco oil processing facilities in Saudi Arabia on September 14th. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkais. Hello Prabir, thank you for joining us. And as we know, the attacks took place at the Apkaik and Khuresh facilities. And these are very sub important facilities for Aramco, for Saudi Arabia and even for global oil production and trade. And the Houthis have claimed that uh, they were responsible for the attacks. And these at least 10 drones are supposed to have been involved. So before we get into the uh, logistics and the military capabilities involved, what do you think is likely to be the impact on trade and oil production in general? Well, as you know, that the oil prices have risen, risen by about $10 per barrel. Right. So obviously there is a significant impact in the short term. Both Saudis as well as the United States has released its strategic oil reserves to mm -hmm. stabilize the price. Right. But in spite of that, there is this spike that has taken place. This is not surprising considering that Saudis uh, roughly produce 16% of the exportable right. uh, oil in the world. And 50% uh, of that oil has been taken out of the market. Mm -hmm. So we have in the exportable, tradable oil, we have really a drop of about 8%. Right. So a 10% spike in the oil price in the short term is not surprising. If the oil uh, that Saudis were producing does come back quickly, and Saudis have said they're going to Produce, uh, restore about 25-30% uh, of that in a, in a few days and they've said another two weeks they'll come back to full, full, production. Uh, full production that right. they were doing earlier. If that is so, we'll have to see what the long-term effect on the oil prices is. But there is this threat that if Houthis have done it once, they can do it again. Exactly. So it does bring into question the safety and the security of the global oil trade, particularly if Saudis continue to be at war with Yemen, to which they have really had no blowback. They had economic consequences, yes, but they really did not face a major, shall we say, downturn right. for this uh, war they have been conducting against Yemen mm -hmm. for the last uh, few years, right. in which the Yemenis have been at the receiving end continuously, 18 million years starvation, uh, 1 million very close to uh, what would be called extreme starvation, and of course schools, colleges, hospitals, all of it that closed, right. uh, cholera outbreaks, and so on. When I mean, you can go on about the consequences, it's a humanitarian disaster of a uh, worst kind that we have had in the 21st century. Right. But the Saudis didn't pay a price for that mm -hmm. except burning oil money. Mm -hmm. This time they are paying a price mm -hmm. and it threatens also Aramco's IPO. Aramco has a profitability of $111 billion right. uh, dollars last year. So if Aramco is at threat of its oil production, then Saudi economy is a threat and also Aramco's IPO, which is a much closer right. issue, is also under threat. Right. So I think this is a huge impact that it has shown uh, the fragility of the, shall we say, the oil system mm -hmm. and also Saudi Arabia's underpinning the system of right. oil production, the dollars and everything that we right. talk about. Underpinning of all of this was really uh, Saudi Arabia's oil production. Right. I think all of that is certainly mm -hmm. uh, threatened at least in the short term but could also be threatened in the longer term right. because I do not see what they can do mm -hmm. to prevent these attacks right. if the military attacks that Houthis have claimed really have taken place as they have claimed it to be. Right. If that is so, I would say that Saudi Arabia has very little defense against it and I don't see them being able to create a defense in the short term for it. Whether they can create it at all in the long term right. is an open question. Right. And this is also leading to speculation that the Saudis and even the US might uh, get into talks with the Houthis. But uh, also talking about the Houthis' military capabilities, we've dis discussed this quite a few times before. But their claims were that 10 drones were involved uh, in the attack in, uh, in that, on the two facilities. And there's also been news that a cruise missile was also perhaps involved, although it's not clear where it came from. So how do you see the advance of the Houthis' military capabilities and right now what do you think they're capable of? Well, you know, they have been hitting in, in Saudi Arabia for now some month, a month and a half. Right. They have also hit earlier in United Arab Emirates airports. airports. They have already shown the capability of low-cost drones mm -hmm. and deploying them to hit at targets. Right. Now, why 
the world is talking about cruise missiles it coming from Iran or Iraq is not, not clear. Because if we look at what they've already displayed, they have displays, displayed a range of uh, missiles mm -hmm. and drones, which I think they displayed about four or five months In back, July, yeah. to un unveil these yes. uh, missiles and drones. That if we look at all of them, the technologies involved do not appear to be anything substantially uh, something that uh, is beyond what would be what would be called do, do it yourself drone technologies so there are three parts to this one is the flying platform itself mm -hmm. the basically what we would call a drone right. which can carry explosives now if we look at that that you have a immediate something which shoots this into the air so you need some glide uh, some something to give it an initial impetus then you need fuel and a uh, low cost jet engine which would then burn the fuel and take it forward the samad 3 it's basically a drone which had which took which can take off has a jet engine has petrol tanks which are called conformal tanks that means they're not drop tanks they continue to be there they allow you to extend the range but they are not aerodynamically they are such that the, uh, the there's not too much drag so the aerodynamically they are good mm -hmm. so they have shown this that means they had a jet engine mounted on this drone for a longer term longer term flight and also this engine people have talked about it it's a check engine which is there which is again available off the shelf it can be bought it's a small engine right. and could use for a whole number of other purposes as well and if you want to manufacture it even manufacturing it is not that difficult so if you look at that that was the uh, the platform which was used the platform looks very much something doable may cost something like two thousand to five thousand dollars as a platform to build but not really more than that and depending on the amount of explosives it would carry and that also depends on the distance right. the second is the guidance system now there are three kinds of guidance system what's called an iner inertial navigation system that is not very accurate so it works in the short run range but not in the long range then there is the guidance system which uses satellite navigation the basically the gps glona system then this is a chipset which is cheaply available today it really comes from your mobile chipset so that chipset can be easily put in and there is a processor there so it's possible to use satellite navigation as well along with your inertial navigation system and the last part is how do you then conform to the terrain because if you fly low your the radar Saudi Arabian right. defense systems will not detect it defense radar will not detect it so if you want to make it like a cruise missile make it ground hugging then use a ra ra altimeter mm -hmm. radar based altimeter by which you can actually track what you think the terrain is right. and again you can process a simple processor which mm -hmm. maps the looks at the terrain mm -hmm. from the altimeter and the radar can match what it is seeing with what it knows its path to be and therefore also see that it doesn't go too high or too right. low so these are all possible then of course you have to have a terminal uh, system which takes it and makes it a weapon now this all of this gives you 10 feet to 30 feet accuracy so if you have a 10 feet to 30 feet accuracy if you have a big enough target like uh, abakak or uh, kores then this is not asking for too much to see how it delivers its payload mm -hmm. and it seems that it could also have a fairly cheap terminal guidance system which is camera based again cameras are cheap uh, right. cameras are available so all of these is something that Yemenis would have to have good software skills to do so now unfortunately for the Saudis Yemenis are known to have good computer skills and there have been reports in the press that uh, they were quite surprised some few years back that Yemeni hackers were so good so this would seem to show that putting all of it together mm -hmm. is not something out of the ray, out of reach of the Yemeni right. uh, or the Houthis. The question is, of course, did they get know-how from Iranians? Did they get drone know-how for Hezbollah? That's all human uh, knowledge. And of course, the considering that the way Saudis have been threatening Iran has been a part of the coalition with Israel and the United States, and the fact that the U.S. and Israel 
Israel have been supporting Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. I do not see what is the great violation of supposedly international law right. by Iranians supplying knowledge mm -hmm. to Houthis or even components to Houthis. Right. And it's, I think, extremely hypocritical mm -hmm. to charge Iran by fostering war mm -hmm. because by arming Houthis with knowledge or even components right. while Saudis are in a war against the Houthis right. and the Yemenis. Right. So I think those kind of hypocrisies you take out, mm -hmm. what Yemenis are showing and the Houthis are showing essentially that if you put this, impose this cost on us, don't think you are getting away unscathed. Right. Till now, they had not been able to inflict pain. Mm -hmm. They had some skirmishes, some attacks, but they really did not inflict pain. This is the big one, right. that this changes the context of war. Mm -hmm. And two weeks back in News Click, we had discussed exactly. that the asymmetric nature of the drone warfare is such mm -hmm. that the Yemenis don't have to defeat the Saudis. Right. They have to inflict pain and show they can do it again and again. Right. And I think they have proven more than proven their point now. Right. And so this leaves us mainly with the possibility that the US-Saudi-Israel alliance might actually have to consider making compromises and peace at specific areas, especially Yemen, if they want to actually uh, preserve their alliance, so to speak. Otherwise, with the Strait of Hormuz on one hand and with Saudi oil facilities on the other, irrespective of whether there's an alliance or not between the Iran and the Houthis, there is a possibility that the entire basis of this alliance could uh, be in danger. You see, I think it's very important to understand what's happening in this whole area. Hezbollahs have shown also capabilities, which is certainly much higher than what the Houthis are right. showing. They have not exchanged this into, they have not had exchanges with Israel on this count, but they brought down Israel's drones. Mm -hmm. They have shown that they have rocketing, rocketry skills, rock missile capabilities, which probably are much bigger than what the Houthis have. So I think that is very much already established. Then we now see what the Houthis can do. Right. They have been bombed back by Saudis thanks to uh, the United States, uh, UK, and also France and other countries, bombed back to virtually Stone Age. In spite of that, they're able to inflict this damage. Right. And Iran has shown that Straits of Hormuz is something they still own. And that makes it very difficult right. for countries like US or others to do control the Straits of Hormuz mm -hmm. without completely destroying Iran. Right. Now, is it possible to do that, do, do that without a major uh, damage to the U.S. itself in the region? Uh, their bases and their other infrastructure, their allies' uh, infrastructure, these are all open to question. Right. So what it does happen is change the uh, nature of the strategic balance, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. that it is not that there is strategic parity. There isn't. But the strategic balance, the ability to inflict pain mm -hmm. and stand up still is, I think, what is changing the nature of these uh, battles. Right. And it's very clear. Uh, U.S. had two weeks back said they would like to start talking to the Houthis. Saudis still didn't show that urgency. They started rethinking, I think, on their strategy, but they were not really showing urgency. Right. Whether this will bring them to an urgency or not, we don't know. Saudis are not famous for being good fighters. In fact, the, the major fight they do is in the casinos in the West and so on. So this does not show that uh, they have the ability to stand up to what the Houthis are doing. Right. And the fact they have failed to destroy the Houthis with an alliance which is much stronger three years back, that, that now their ability to enter Yemen and take out the Houthi leadership doesn't seem to be there. In fact, UAE has already pulled out mm -hmm. of the war against the Houthis. Uh, Saudis are finding they are being re increasingly abandoned by their mercenary troops. I do not think Saudis can continue the war. And uh, till now, it was the fact that they were not paying a price except in dollars in terms of buying arms. They were not paying a higher price is the reason this continued. Right. Now they see they have also to pay a, pay a price. I think you are going to see within the next one month, mm -hmm. peace talks start. How much the Houthis will extract as a price for the peace from the Saudis is open to question because Saudis are frankly open to huge reparation bill from Yemen right. if the Houthis press for the same. Right. Thank you, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.